And I'm taking that to say that we are live. And live? If, not from New York City. We should do live from Houston, Texas, or thereabouts. <laughs> it's the <laughs> Scott and Dave show. Hey, everybody. How are you? Super. And you? I'm doing great. I'm are you doing... ready for this? Happy December. Since the last time we saw each other, it was still November. I'm so not ready for December. Uh, <laughs> wow. Little bird I'm told me you got a busy day after this. What? Little birdie told me you got a busy day after drama today. I do. I got tagged to, uh, well, meeting with my publisher, of course, and then I got tagged to perform. So doing the doing the whole Renaissance costume and... You should live stream that, put that on Discord. <laughs> just what you guys want to, just to hear me sing, right? Yeah. Well, hi, everybody. It is the first Friday of December, and we're doing drama today. We've got a, a nice show lined up for you. We're looking for your questions. We've got answers, and you can question us on anything that your little heart desires outside of religion and politics. And if I hear the word coven, one more coven. <laughs> <laughs> coven! Which is one more time or presidential election one more time. I will hang myself live on the air, <laughs> but otherwise, throw that, them on out there. That could be entertaining, Dave. <laughs> At least once. <laughs> once. That's right. Once. Once. <laughs> we are doing this regular show and the uh, Monday, Wednesday uh, shows with Mike Myers. Um, because um, many of us are still in lockdown and, and uh, experiencing the third wave of the thing that we won't mention because <laughs> um, we don't really want Dave to hang himself. Uh, but because we're still in lockdown and we're still studying and, and working on certifications, we are doing these shows so that you have an opportunity to interact with us and we have an opportunity to interact with you. So ask some questions. Our specialties are the CompTIA certifications, uh, IT Fundamentals, A+, Net+, Security+, and sometimes we slide into CYSA plus and pen test plus. Uh, but you can ask us anything. We, um, if we don't have an answer, we'll tell you. And that'll be okay too. And feel we free to ignore it for the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Scott Jernigan. I'm editor in chief for Total Seminars and, and a frequent contributor, uh, writer and editor with Mike Myers, the president of our company. And I am with today, my I am Dave Rush, Senior Instructor at Total Seminars, and not doing a lot of instruction these days outside of this, so whenever a project comes up, Scott says, hey, I've got some overflow project, here you go. So I am I keep busy. It, it's amazing how much there is to do. I have some regular jobs that never go away, and there's always a, a new one popping in, so I've got a couple of really good new projects to start on on Monday. Awesome. If you would like to get in touch with us, can't imagine why that would like to happen. We would like to see your questions uh, posted here. You know that. But if you don't, if you can't, if you won't, you know, man, hey, there it is. <clears throat> I'll kind of sort of get this working. Then do so. Send us an email. Uh, and you can send one to Mike as well. And so anything, again, it's fair game. And our bailiwick for these emails is this show, of course. We want to talk about Raspberry Pis. You want to talk about anything CompTIA or certification oriented. Uh, you got a technical problem that you just need to, to work out and this isn't the appropriate venue for it. Send us a note. I'm Dave R at TotalSem.com. Scott is Scott J at TotalSem.com. Mike is Michael M at TotalSem.com. You can catch us sometimes on stream on Blood Rush TX. And Scott is Scarheart. And by stream, he means LinkedIn. Happy to, to connect with you, and you can connect with us. And that's that. Oh, tell them what we got for them this week, Scott. Oh, and just because you're here and because we love you, the AMA special deals for this week are 50% off on all the A plus and Network Plus Total Tester and Total Tester slash Sims bundles and the Security Plus Total Tester. And yes, I'm working on the Security Plus simulations too, but they're not done. So there you go. All you need to do to get these amazing deals is to type the code 113020 when you check out at totalsim.com. And I know you're having a tough time trying to memorize that. It was the date on Monday. 
So in, <laughs> in U.S. format. So 11.30 right. of 20. All right. And then the message went away. Okay, here we go. Because my screen went totally black and I was like, oh, <laughs> this is going to be different. Yet another reason to love, hate, Zoom. Well, let's see who's doing what, Scott. Okay, let's see who's here. Elbo shows up two hours early to announce that his NVMe drive is working. All right. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, you're... You want to hang with your friends when you show up two hours before the party starts. I will not start chatting that early. I did see you there at two hours early. I just was doing my setup and said, oh, my gosh, look at that. Elbow's here. OK, back to work. <laughs> That's excellent. Tell what's here, of course. Connor Wellman, good to see you. Deepak Poon, good to see you, too. Alan Dugan, Chuck DHD, hello. Dr. Quinn, hey. Andre de Guyart, our favorite Dutchman. <laughs> Regardless of what Mike Myers says. <laughs> Not Portuguese, right? <laughs> and we haven't seen him in a couple of weeks, so. Uh, Patrick Velas. Yeah. So after this question, how would explain Raspberry technology to an absolute amateur? It's Where are you? Yeah, 202. Patrick, how would I explain a Raspberry Pi to a, a, an absolute beginner or a novice? Uh, I would simply tell them that Raspberry Pi is a tiny computer. So I'm trying to reach over and grab one. I'm not looking at you while I do this. There's one. And, uh, you know, it's a heck of a question as I think about this. And I try to, to put it in a nutshell. We've done this for 20 weeks now or so. And it, it, we have kind of a simple and common language to do that. But so let's go like this. We'll use the marketing way of doing it. It is a credit card sized computer. This is just the bare motherboard. There are cases for it available and you plug into it. All the standard things that you would plug in with any other computer that people are used to, a desktop type computer. So keyboards and mice and monitors and power and storage devices and network connections and it's got built-in Wi-Fi. So what makes this different than the computer that you and I buy every day? That's not the answer to your question, but it's it's the crux of the thing, right? So if you want to answer the question in the purest way, you can say answer the same way that you would answer somebody who asked you, what is that thing that you have on your desk or under your desk or that you carry around in your briefcase or in your backpack? So they're all computers. They all do the same things. They all have some differences. The big differences here is this thing doesn't run Mac operating system or Windows operating system. It runs a Linux operating system, one of the big three operating systems out there. Android is an operating system that's based on Linux. Uh, Mac OS is an operating system that's based on Unix from which Linux came. So. That's the difference. It's just a different operating system. There are bazillions and bazillions of programs for them. Some of the programs are the same as the ones that you would run in the Windows environment. Some of them are not available. And it works the other way around. There are some programs that you might want to run in Windows or on Mac that aren't available to run on a Linux machine. But small credit card size computer, low power, fairly good performance. We've done some amazing things with it in the past and we will continue to do those things today and tell them tell them the compelling reason to get a raspberry pi i always wait for you to push me on that one so go out and buy a windows machine the cheapest one you're going to get without peripherals without keyboards and mice and everything like that's not a, a laptop it's going to be a couple hundred bucks uh, or you buy this guy for 35 and by the time you buy everything that you need to make it a true computing experience the keyboards the mice the monitors and whatever, it's 90 bucks, 100 bucks, something like that. So it is just cheap as chips. <laughs> so inexpensive, powerful, all in one package and very approachable uh, as long as you're willing to learn Linux. So, and that's what we use the Raspberry Pi for uh, in this circumstance. Uh, we. A lot of us play with the Pi because it's fun and interesting and we can do crazy stuff, but it's also a great uh, tool for learning 
what you need to know for CompTIA A+, and, and CompTIA Network+, Plus, because Linux is on the exam, because Linux is out there in the wild, and all techs need to learn it. So that's why we use the Raspberry Pi in our courses. Absolutely. Thank you. So it, Let's the puns begin. <laughs> right? Uh, go ahead. Tell us about your Pat Benatar experience. Oh, <laughs> nothing super about that one. Pat came to town a few years ago, and uh, she scheduled one night at one of the big venues in town, and uh, it sold out in about 14 seconds. Right. And so they scheduled a second night, and it sold out in another 14 seconds. And so with this huge demand, venue wasn't available for a third night, or they had to travel on to their next place. So they made an announcement that they would schedule another one and they scheduled one about six months later and uh, it wasn't a concert. It was just Pat and her husband, Neil, and they did a, a presentation. They talked about their songs and their experiences and they sang what they call the, their Holy 13, their, their big 13 hit that everybody lives and worships for. Uh, but it was just a fun, it was uh, almost like theater in the round, just talking to them. They didn't take questions. That was kind of unfortunate. But, and, and I've seen that same presentation. They've done this almost identical show a number of times in the past. You can watch them on YouTube, but still so much fun. And I'll tell you what was the most fun about it. I can't do this and stand up and, and demonstrate it well, but Pat's voice is so big and so powerful at her age. That, so oh, and she is petite as all get out. So yeah. for some songs that are, are just her power ballads, she would take the wireless mic that she had and she was sitting down and would hold it, hold it down below her knee and face the audience and sing with that power voice. And it was just so well picked up and the room reverberated. And a couple of years ago, I'm still feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> she was, uh, if my understanding is correct, she was trained uh, as an opera singer. That's before correct. Rock and roll. Yep. There you go. Yeah, good show. Yeah. See her if you get a chance. If we ever get to go to concerts again someday. <laughs> <laughs> you mean in person? Being around real people? Say it ain't so. Changing sweat? Yeah. I don't know. Outside of my wife and son, the only human I've seen in months face-to-face -face was you dropping some gear off at your house. That's true. You feel Maybe that. Now. Get out. Okay, I got my stuff. Get the heck out of here. You're masked and uh, socially distanced. And yeah. Sure. Awesome. So at 2.05... Chuck DHD asks, I see many supply power supply testers that are inexpensive. Are those sufficient testing PC power supplies? Go get them, Scott. Uh, inexpensive power supply tester. So what I use to, to do a power supply testing is a multimeter. That's how I plug things in and check my wires and do all that. Um, so that's not necessarily inexpensive. The decent digital one is about $25 uh, in the US. Um, do you mean the little, the little single thing where you plug in? We use those all the time too. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. The one with the little push button on it and it checks all the rails at the same time. Yeah, we use those all the time, so yeah. Yeah, and, and they're they're very inexpensive. They're they're seven to fifteen bucks, something like that. So yep. heck yeah. Under yeah, those are, those are great. Fine. Big possibilities in a small package. <laughs> right. Oh, I can't wait to get on Discord. I feel a pun coming on. <laughs> uh what do we got here? The usual crowds. So everybody here knows. I don't see any new faces about uh Discord. If you're new here, if you're uh, not familiar with the unofficial Total Sim Discord channel. Uh, just post a, a little hi or new here or something like that uh, in the line as we go down through here and we get to your question or your comment. Uh, we'll figure out if we need to uh, discuss it in greater detail. So, says Deepak at 207, Apple is saying that my 23.8 inch monitor might have something to do with the fans spinning too fast. The graphics card has to render a lot of stuff on the big monitor and it's working too hard. You know, if you have a 56 inch monitor or a 23.8 inch monitor, they have the same number of pickle, pick, pickles. 
<laughs> it's the same really zero. Yeah. Not drinking in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so no, I don't buy that argument. I don't either. Uh, I don't think it's working any harder just because of the physical size. There was more pixels, slightly different animal. If you have, if you're running a 4K monitor, as opposed to a, a typical 23 inch monitor is going to be a 1080p. Uh, tell, tell us, Deepak, what your base system is, because that that will make a difference. Um, I thought it was an iMac, but um, if I'm mistaken, this was obviously referencing a question from Wednesday. Um, let us know. Yep. Yeah. 208 Tullowit, Raspberry Pi is a really, everybody's giving good summary answers. Thank you. A really hot item for tech nerds today. Yep. No, I, I try not to do that because I want to make this approachable to people who aren't techie nerds. Yeah, we techie nerds can do some really guts deep stuff with it. But uh, you take the, the new one, the Raspberry Pi 400, and that's not designed for tech weenies. That's designed for kids. Uh, saw a picture with, uh, that Andre posted on Discord the other day with his, uh, one of his children playing or using the Raspberry Pi computer, which you know, just thrills me to the marrow. I, all, a, all a Twitter and a gog about that. Bearded lady. I tried that one time. It was a Halloween costume. It was very popular. <laughs> Apple made a comment blaming other equipment that isn't Apple's standard responses. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Dave, Dave, Dave. I mean, now, now I can't. That I'm, I'm. You had to go there. Now that's in my brain. What line? <laughs> Good line, Chuck DHD. Come on to the Discord channel, Chuck. When, after this show, I'm going to be on there. I think Scott's got a, a busy schedule tonight, won't make it, but uh, yeah. we got to talk about what Chuck DHD is all about. Right. I'm having a good time making up stuff for that. Studying for A-plus core one exam, plan to schedule the exam next week. You plan to schedule it. So next week, I'm going to schedule myself on the exam or your plan on taking it next week and you'll be scheduling it between now and then. Uh, so if you're going to schedule it, you know, Mike's thing is uh, heat and pressure make diamonds. So schedule it a reasonable amount of time out, whatever it's going to take you to complete your studying and then a little bit of restudy and do it. Don't extend it, you know, weeks, year, months, years later than what it's going to take. You can't review forever. There comes a point when you said, look, I've, I, I need this date. I've got uh, January 15th. I'm going to take this test and I'm going to put my full fourth, full force effort between then and now and get ready but good luck absolutely good luck and Deepak I, I looked up your uh, MacBook Pro um, they're they're flat out lying to you <laughs> your, your MacBook Pro will run a mate a 2k monitor externally will run two 2k monitors externally without blinking so no it's not the monitor I'm, I'm going with my initial assessment from before, I, I'm betting that it's got to be blown out. I'll bet it's accumulated enough dust and debris since 2014. Yeah, that's what I would guess too. Finally hit critical mass and yep. get yourself a can of uh, compressed air. Make sure you hold it upright. Don't hold it upside down or some nasty liquid that's flammable comes out of there. I learned that by experience last year, just last winter. Uh, and blow out everything that's got a space or a gap, every connector, uh, in the keyboard, any places you can blow air, do it. Do it outside. <laughs> Thank you. Took the words <laughs> right out. <laughs> Pie hole, flight aware. Oh man, I love flight aware. Bearded lady, you're doing flight aware. We we got to talk. Definitely uh, catch up with me on uh, Discord. I, I do the whole flight aware with the external box uh, and the ADSB. We're we're cooking here. You're speaking my language. Sure, Vipins and Wikis and all, you know, the, the billions of projects that we've done here so far and that we're going to continue to do. I have such piles of equipment that I bought in the last couple of months that I want to do. Some of them are way beyond what we're doing here and some of them scream to be done by us. Absolutely. We've got lots of great projects still and lots of things to play with. I didn't miss that payoff, Tullowit. I chose to ignore it. It was good. <laughs> 
Yeah, kids love the pie mainly because of the games I put on it. Sure, RetroPie. Okay, if you want to make that accessible to the masses, install RetroPie on it. Get a couple of traditional controllers, and man, that'll just kill the rest of COVID lockdowns. Right, Pac-Man, Asteroids, right, Space Invaders. Jason, uh, the reason I say that at two seventeen, Dave, what makes you say the Pi Four Hundred is geared toward kids? Can't you do the same things with it? Yes, it's the same thing as every other Raspberry Pi with two minor exceptions. One, it's not a bare board that you have to go out and buy a kit for or a case or something like that. And most, but not all of the connectors are brought out to the, the back of the chassis. The chassis, if you're not aware, uh, is a keyboard. So they've taken a keyboard and they've mounted a Raspberry Pi inside it, and then they've rerouted all of the connectors so that it comes out the back of the keyboard. So again, it's kind of geared more toward a consumer user. Yes, you certainly can take advantage of the GPIO. People, are, you could manually plug into them. Folks are making adapters to make it easy to uh, fiddle with them, I think is the right word, the, the technical term. But if I'm going to fiddle with things like that in GPIO, and it, as a tech weenie, I would much rather work with this platform than with that one. But that's a personal preference. So, yeah, and it's not geared just for kids. It's geared for adults as a browsing machine, as a, uh, a personal productivity machine for all of the, the types of programs that you run day-to-day, -day, word processors, spreadsheet, database programs. Uh, it's all there. It's all built in. It's ready to go. So it's much more consumer oriented. All that stuff is here too. And if you take advantage of that stuff, great. But my world, I don't use this much as a personal productivity tool. I use it as a learning tool. I use it as a training tool. I use it as a, a hobbyist tool. But yeah, you can do all of those things with the 400 just as well. Just it's a little different form factor. Okay, you're doing your A plus on the 18th. Very good. That's today's the fourth. You have two weeks to the day. You're going to do it on a Friday. That'll be great. You can celebrate afterward uh, and start thinking about Christmas. That's awesome. Jason is a uh, Brendan. Hey, Brendan. What is it? It's affordable for schools. Oh my gosh. You, schools suck them up like crazy. Yep. They're doing wonderful things with them, uh, especially like coding classes. Uh, computing fundamentals classes. Yeah, no, they're, they're great. And they're a completely ridiculously inexpensive option to get people into computing. And, and part of part of what's interesting about the whole Raspberry organization, uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation, I should say, is that they take the money we give them for buying pies and they use that to provide computing options for the rest of the world that is having that can't afford it so taking taking what what we can take for granted right really in the west and sharing the love so bringing the whole world connected that's the idea yep yeah that was the whole thing behind it it wasn't just a techie toy the whole thing was they were they had this foundation that was providing computer education services and this sort of grew out of that yeah no it's a it's a great it's a great organization very impressive yeah. and, and so going to do his exam next friday if pearson view home testing schedule is opening that morning i wonder I, we haven't looked into this in a while how easy it is and, and how short you can make reservations now of course in the, the very early days when we started talking about this some areas found it very easy uh but then it didn't go well because they were still working out the kinks I wasn't laughing at your kinks. I'm sure. <laughs> I was oh, laughing at Telewitch yeah, one. Thank you. Uh, I'm reading Deepak at 223. I have a board with four RAM slots and I have enough money for eight gigs. Would you should suggest one eight gig stick or four two gig sticks? Let's say the board supports multi-channel and I intend to upgrade RAM in the future. Why? Okay, so it supports multi-channel. Next question you have to ask yourself is, is it 
dual channel or is it quad channel? Doesn't really matter for what your plan is, but first to answer your question, I'm gonna throw out one. No, I would not recommend an eight gig stick in your situation. If it supports multi-channel, you wanna take advantage of that multi-channel and you can't do that with a single stick of RAM. You're gonna want a pair of twos or two pairs of twos, uh, or maybe even if it's just dual channel, maybe a pair of fours. In fact, I love right. this answer. And that way you can upgrade later. So you get eight gigs right now, it's dual channel, put them in the appropriate A1 and B1 channels or whatever it is. And then when you get a little more money and you're ready to expand, another pair of fours goes a long way. And if you want, you could get four twos right now, but when you update, you're gonna wind up with some throwaways. Let's say you can only afford uh, a pair of fours later. So you take out a pair of the twos, you pop in the fours. Now, what do you do with these two twos? They're great for earrings. Right. Collecting dust on your shelf. Mm. Yeah, because there's no no real resale in in RAM sticks, which is kind of weird. But all right, that's my thoughts. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. Cool. Yeah, I'd go I'd go two fours if you can afford them. Um, I guess the real kicker for me is when can you afford that next eight gig stick, right? If it's like, well, I can have an eight gig now. And I can buy another one next month when I get paid. And that that's a different that's a different idea. You're right. Good and, and suffer suffer. It's not that bad with one eight gig stick now. And then when you go to sixteen gigs with that second one, man, what a great upgrade that's going to be in, in RAM yep. quantity and RAM access speed. Yep. Thirty to fifty bucks is not much for most of us, but it's a fortune for developing countries. Exactly right. Dr. Quinn. Yes, the St. Jude of computing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, dude, Francis. Share the love. Love is a battlefield. I got I suckered into reading the rest of that. There it goes. That's the one I cracked up on. <laughs> I like love Battlefield. I love Battlefield the game. I also love Love the game. Uh, and yes, Andre, 32 gigabytes is better than 16 gigabytes. <laughs> Come on, man. Also, Andre, that oh, air you're breathing, as long as we're going to do Captain Obvious lines. <laughs> <laughs> right. We have a saying here in America, if more is better, too much is just right. <laughs> I don't know if that's an American saying, but it's certainly mine. There you go. 225. Jason Helm says, Dave, I was looking at the times. You can schedule a test and you can schedule for 1 or 2 a.m. all the way till 6 or 7 p.m. Maybe later. Okay, great. Thanks for looking into that. Man, <laughs> 2 a.m. All right, I'm done coding. I think I'll take a Pearson View exam. <laughs> well, think about it, though. If you're, I mean, the proctors can be from all over the world, so why not? Absolutely. They should be able to schedule it anytime. So. That idea. Brendan at 225. Hey, Dave, just got to the IPv6 Net Plus episode. Will we ever switch over to just IPv6 websites without the need to tunnel on IPv4? Okay, so we're not tunneling uh, anymore. Hurricane Electric still kind of has a product, but all the other tunnelers like Torito and things like that, they don't even exist anymore. So most of those uh, resources that are out on the web are dual stack, just as we are becoming more and more dual stack as our ISPs provide it. So I think the nature of this question is, when will we finally get rid of IPv4? And there are as many opinions on that as there are people with them. My opinion, I think we're still gonna be using IPv4 for up to another 20 years, less and less and less, but it's, I beg to use IPv6 on everything every day, and it just doesn't happen. That's one of the things Mike was talking about doing a show on, uh, is lighting up IPv6. It's kind of weird. He's He says his IPv6 works. Scott and I and some of the other people in the company have the same uh, ISP, and when I light up IPv6 and turn off IPv4, I become blind to the world. I can't access any internet resources or anything like that. So I'm, I'm really curious to watch his episode on that, on what he does and, and what his configuration is and what I'm missing on mine. Because 
we're supposed to be smart enough to figure this stuff out without watching Mike, but maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe it doesn't always happen. Andre de Goyer <laughs> knows guys who don't like shooting games. Okay, so two problems with that. First of all, they're nuts. Second of all, given your hobbies, <laughs> you shouldn't associate with anybody who doesn't like a shooting game. But he likes driving me. So. Check with us on Discourse if you want to follow up what that all means. So Chuck at yeah. 226 says that he scheduled ITF um, last Friday, took the exam on Monday, easy to schedule, set up on exam day. So good. I'm right. going to presume that you passed it. Right. So, Chuck. tentative big round of applause. <laughs> Let us know, man. 16 gigs. What about four, eight gigs, 32? Okay, yeah, you said that. Uh, it was it was a, a budget issue. He said he has enough money to buy eight right now because 64 is better than 32. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, yes. Okay, so for real, a round of applause, Chuck. Congratulations on ITF. Yes. And That's good luck. cool. And so I just passed ITF Plus. Two weeks later, I'm going to pass Core One. That's just awesome. You better pass. Right. Rock and on. Then, Mike Mode, get a job. <laughs> not just seven. Hey, Kevin Lopez, I fear that when Cyberpunk comes out next week, my studies are going to suffer. <laughs> I can see how that would happen. Oh, yeah, if it comes out, right? Yeah. It's already been delayed, what, three times? Yeah, I bought, it, I bought it for my son for his birthday, and then the next day they announced they were delaying it another to December. It's like, delayed gratification, son. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Bird, a positive right? spin on somebody else's screw-up. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, yeah. I need to take an English exam for my education. We will vouch for you, Andre. We've spoken with you many times. Should I learn or practice anything for it? Uh, I can't imagine you wouldn't ace an ESL course, knowing you as we do. Yeah. Um, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, you, you even catch all the crazy American nuances, so... Huh. I mean, yeah. as long as you know the definition of a Fetzer valve and a Franistat, and I know you know those things. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you ever seen the Black Adder episode? You have. You've seen every Black Adder episode. Sure. Where the, uh, the first writer of the first, was it Dictionary or Encyclopedia? Encyclopedia came in and, and Black Adder just started throwing made up words at him. <laughs> I cracked up so much during that episode. It was, you know, watch Black Adder, look it up, watch it. It's three seasons. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's British comedy at its best. It's Mr. Bean, the guy who plays Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson. But back when he was funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're a hard man. <laughs> Mike has the internet box with the red flashing light, so anything will work for him. It's exactly right. Right. But he doesn't know that, and a number of the episodes uh, that Mike has, of, of the videos that Mike has shot to train with, you'll see in the background, we kind of uh, Easter egg background things there's lava lamps and all kinds of other wacky weird things and one day mike brought the internet in if you're not familiar with the internet look up the internet and the it crowd right you for raymond it was like just posted that it crowd okay. yes yep. <laughs> that's a really cool piece of, of toy and it should be in the background of everybody's system right 231, how are we doing here? We're on 33, we're butt caught up and plenty of time. Easy exercise, fun today. I have some veteran friends with PTSD, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, totally fair enough. I I, I get that. Space yeah. Invaders, I like that one. I get to play Space Invaders now and Pac-Man. AWS, Google, or Azure certs? AWS. I'd go AWS as well. If you want the, if you want the industry leader, that's it. The other ones have value, but so uh, okay. Let me let me play devil's advocate then. Um, if you have a major uh, data center that's in your neighborhood or close enough for you to work at, and you're like, I would like to work for them, and they're an Azure shop, 
then go for an Azure certification, right? Because that's that's what you would want. But uh, AWS is is the big boy right now. So. I knew Tala with no black adder. We should do black. I'll get a black adder thing up there. We'll do black adder lines one day. That'll waste the entire two hours. Right. <laughs> we'll just be punning each other. You know, when you ran over the dog, my dog, your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you'll know everybody in there. Uh, Stephen Fry is in there, and Hugh, uh, help me out here. Grant. Thank, no. <laughs> Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie, thanks so much. <laughs> uh, yeah. Give me a box for giveaway. Those things have got to be cheap. I mean, you could 3D print one and just put a little LED blinker in it, for goodness sake, and that's got to cost a grand total of a buck thirty. Thank you, Zolo and Hugh Laurie. You know, it's weird. I heard that, and in my head, I saw the British spelling for lorry vehicle. And... <laughs> oh, I see what happened there. Okay. Brain riffing on a the theme there. Yeah. All right. Well, we're caught up on questions. We'll come back at 2.35. Okay. One with Samuel Johnson. Exactly right, David. <laughs> that was so good. I can't help not reading here. What happened to the I know, right? I I have to convince my boss to, uh, it's, it's one thing to uh, have him give away um, electronic stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Giving away practice exams and, and even uh, eventually we'll, we'll give away, like let's do the whole thing and give away the video bundle as well. Um, <laughs> I'll mention that to Mike, we'll see if we can do that soon. Uh, but actually, buying physical hardware that we have to pay taxes on and then giving that away. He's a little resistant to that. So we did that at one point, we, we drop shipped some raspberry pies when we had Dr. Evan Upton on yep. uh, three, four, three, four, five of them, something like that. The number changed, yeah. but that's 35 bucks for a pie or maybe a little more for a kit. Look at the price of webcams today. You well, can't find a roof. good one for under a hundred bucks. Yeah, that's a good roof now. We just well, all because <laughs> demand. Okay, well, let me look into some notes here. Do a, a little bit of uh, where we've been, where we're going. Uh, we'll do some more questions, and then we'll start a project today. <clears throat> oh, and of course, news of the day. So just a recap from last week. We'll call that where we've been. Last week was really fun. Uh, it was so global. It was so interesting. Uh, we didn't pie focus. We focused on technology that people use and need for certifications in the real world and as tools in the real world. And that was the use of the Nmap command. What a shock. We did it on a Raspberry Pi. We did it on a Raspberry Pi running Raspbian, a Raspberry Pi running Kali Linux. And then at the end, I also demonstrated using the graphical version of Nmap called Zenmap on Windows. That's cool. Yeah. And, oh my gosh. I, I look at the uh, the past hits on our shows sometime to see if there's any interest after the live show. Uh, I think right now sitting at our third most popular <clears throat> review and, and watched archive. So I am definitely thinking in terms of how can we do other tools like that in the future. So it's a great command line utility. It's a vulner vulnerability assessment tool and it's very easy to use. And it doesn't take a lot of effort to learn the basics, to get into the real deep subtleties of it. You wanna put some serious study and some perhaps serious coursework into it, but just fun. And it's just absolutely dead simple to install. You can take, I'll do you now, um, take any Raspberry Pi running Raspberry Pi OS open up a terminal and do sudo apt install nmap. And you got it, it's working. So great, great tool. What we're doing today, let me bring something up here whilst I talk about that. This is so fun. So this is a little graphic that I made. I was gonna have this up and running when we started the show, but I changed my mind. Uh, let me talk for a minute and I'll leave that up there. Uh, two things I want to talk about. This Raspberry Pi. This image I stole off the, the web somewhere. And I mentioned this last week. There was a gold sticker type emblem right here. 
and I used GIMP installed on a Raspberry Pi and the heel selection utility, which we talked about how to install. And uh, I have just knocked out that it made individual berries in the middle instead of kind of a hash and mishmash of red berry color. So this week's show is how to boot your Raspberry Pi from a USB device like a flash drive. Uh, see, that's it old game that a billion years ago before Jeopardy, Alex Trebek used to host. I don't remember the name of the thing. All right, let's kill that. So that is gonna to be today's show. We're gonna talk about the problems with booting the Raspberry Pi and using uh, a micro SD card as the primary storage device. There's a lot of problems with that. I'll get into that in detail. Pi, three and late Pi twos had the ability to boot, have the ability to boot from a USB device. Could be a flash drive, could be a USB uh, hard drive that's in an enclosure, could be a US, uh, could be an enclosure that's got an SSD in it attached to a USB port. All of those are bootable items in Raspberry Pi three. There were such big changes in Raspberry Pi four when it came out that that wasn't, excuse me, an option. But I, I know it's uh, four months ago, less than that, three months ago, they finally got it up and working great. I've held off for a little while to do this as a presentation until I know all the, the bugs are worked out. They seem to be great. So I'm gonna show you today why you want to get rid of that micro SD card and why you wanna switch instead to a USB device. News, tricks, and traps of the week. Eh, there was some news, nothing worth sharing with you here. Uh, I got one quickie experience. As you may have known from a, a week ago or so when we talked about this, uh, I had a wacky problem with my Raspberry Pi uh, running Pi Hole. And I reached out to the Pi Hole subreddit forum for some advice and got some and it worked. Except a couple of days later, uh, well, last the Saturday, in fact, the next day, the newest, latest, greatest, greatest version of Pi Hole was released. Now I'm not dumb enough anymore to jump on something like that the second it came out and thank goodness, because within hours there were reports of how badly it failed under Debian and, and under Raspberry Pi and Debian uh, derivatives running on the Pi. So within six hours or so, they had that fixed, but I thought I'd hold off for a couple more days just to make sure. So finally, it's Tuesday or Wednesday, and I said, I think I'm going to do this. And when I tried to connect to it, I, I got timeout errors, and I was getting all kinds of other errors. And I finally said, all right, well, I'm just going to unplug it and replug it back in make sure everything's copacetic and it didn't come back up. So what I came to believe and do believe is that there was nothing wrong with the Pi itself or with uh, the configuration that I had running Pi hole. I think it was just a glitch in the card. And when we made a change to it, it used a different area of the card and cool, but that glitch continued to grow and, and get worse. And it was a, a tiny card, it was an eight gig card so Pi-hole makes these massive sets of log files. And I think between the glitch and because of the size of the log files, it, it totally swamped the micro SD card. So <laughs> one night late at night, I'm done working on projects for Total Sim and nothing major going on here. I, I did a fresh reinstall on a 64 gig card. And it is, uh, and that of course got me the new version as well. So even so much the better, it has just been working like a Swiss watch. Nice. Yeah, it was good. But I just couldn't get to it. It was really weird. Hmm. So if you've got Raspberry Pi running and you got no problems and you want to update, this is really cool. Just log into the Raspberry Pi. Don't log into Pi Hole. Log into your Raspberry Pi like you normally do. Uh, use Putty, Putty and establish an SSH connection or VNC to it and open up a terminal section uh, session. Or if you've got a traditional keyboard and 
uh, monitor hooked up to it. See, I'm pointing to my monitor that you can so see so well. Not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it opened up a terminal session and it's really easy. Just type in the command pihole space minus up. And the update will go and you'll be up and running. So it's very cool. Okay. So what does that new version of pihole get me? Well, I got a big list that I'm reading from here. I'm just going to pull two or three of them. Uh, I'm not going to define any of this stuff. One of the, but I will hit the cool things. Right now, if you've got the old version, you can customize pi-hole settings for individual hosts based on their IP address. Well, that's cool, except might have two problems with it. One, you're either going to have to give that host a permanent IP address, a static one, uh, or it's going to be dynamic. And every time it changes IP addresses, you're going to have to go back in and recustomize. So the new version allows you to customize based on a client's MAC address. That never changes unless you're doing something really wacky and trying to spoof somebody somewhere. So that's just an awesome piece of uh, information. Uh, there is a new feature in there, actively scan all interfaces for available DHCP servers. Why this matters is it will watch DHCP traffic and register host names if that's available whenever a host gets a DHCP address, a DHCP assigned address. Hmm. Uh, they added some pre-compiled binaries for ARM systems. So that makes the install go faster and it makes it work a little faster. And I'm looking at more things here, mostly don't care. Added support for CNAME records, add or remove on the web interface. Okay, so you can update, add, change or delete names that are assigned to IP host the way PyHole references them within PyHole. That's kind of cool. Uh, they've made the uh, log filter query a little bit easy, easier, lots of other features. A worthwhile update. Sounds good. All right, let's go back and look at questions and then we'll come back in 10 minutes or so or less. Okay. And, okay. And the project. So we left off with Solo it at 236 saying Hugh the Lorry is a UK version of Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> Which, if that were true, that would be epic. <laughs> I hope nobody's missing the really obvious because the voice of Thomas the Tank is Ringo Starr. So as long as we're going to get Brit voiceovers. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty I certain. No idea. If, if it's the, the kind of moon faced blue. Yeah, yeah. Blue train. Yeah, that's Ringo. Wow. I did not know that. They're trying to get me to play piano. So for the record, I don't really play piano, aside from like childhood, the four songs I memorized. <laughs> um, and I use it I use it to warm up for singing and all that sort of stuff. My wife plays. So, And the only reason that I would want to get rid of my piano is to replace it with one that works. <laughs> it's really old. It has some broken keys. Uh, yeah, which, yeah. <laughs> a nice uh, modern electronic one that will fold up into a nice small space. Four words, man. Raspberry Pi MIDI. MIDI interface. There you go. <laughs> yep. Jason, no, Scott doesn't plat the piano. <laughs> Though I've heard him plat other things. <laughs> and you not will bust up bad bad Leroy Brown. Man, I love bad bad Leroy Brown. I love everything by Jim Croce. And why do people want to hear modern music? <laughs> I just don't. I don't get that. Yeah, right. Anything newer than 13th century is kind of out of your bailiwick, huh? I'm I'm more of a 16th, 17th century man, but you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> the old stuff is very very unapproachable. And by, by old stuff, I mean medieval stuff because it works. Yeah. Things, so. Who was yeah. looking for a qualifier? Yeah. <laughs> the old stuff, you know, come on. <laughs> that was weak, Tellowit. The promises. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a line to pull from a vintage, I think, but it just, it was weak. Sorry. A man, piano, white plays. I've never heard Katie play. I'd like that. Yeah, she's, she's, she's good. She's actually better on the flute. Really? Yeah, she's, she's cool. when she'll play. 
she like grew up um, performing, uh, was incredibly talented. And once she was old enough to say no, she just was like, That's it, huh? I never wanted to perform again. So, yeah, but then she took up uh, the high wire act and. She, well, that's different, you know, because that's just about that's about the thrill seeking and the death defying, gravity chasing, no net, you know. Come on. <laughs> hey, lobster! I love that one, and that's a good avatar. Good name, man. Yep. Check into Discord when we're done. We would like to say hi. Absolutely. Oh, man, Scott's had Mandos for a long time, but a, a two three years ago. In the office, he keyed on another kind of Mando and uh, the, his octave mandolin. <laughs> I feel the need to grab. And we lost him for, I don't know, three months. He was just so wrapped up in the coolness of this cool Mando that he got. Ladies and gentlemen, breaking news, elbows <laughs> eating lunch or easting lunch. Man, that is so big. It, it's huge. <laughs> but it's, it's not... Not for medieval stuff so much as as uh, Irish session type music is what it's designed for. When you're out on Robert Burns night. That's right. That's definitely when I play it. The Burns edge. Oh, okay. That's the elbow because yeah, <laughs> definitely not Benatar. And uh, for the record, Lobster, yes, I enjoy heavy metal and have for a long time. So look at his hair, for goodness' sake. <laughs> uh, on the drive transfer with the tv computer says elbow so can't do anything with it right now well i guess that means you can't break for lunch he's, he's eating lunch there at his computer so i'll hit you with my best shot tolo it <laughs> man oh. alice is in here you know she always turns up like 15 minutes before we shut down so we'll catch her yeah assuming she's still up so john john <laughs> I'll do this at Discord, in Discord, but I'll throw this out now. I'll start thinking about it. Nobody has mentioned a couple of the shows that I'm wrapped up in these days. Uh, I'm a cord cutter, so I catch it online somehow, somewhere after the fact. But uh, speaking of Mando, Mandalorian, and uh, yes. Star Trek Discovery, which I know they've also put now on broadcast television because it doesn't have enough viewers on their private channel. But man, I binged that when it came out, the first two seasons, and <clears throat> Just started the third season a week ago or so, and I only watched one episode. I haven't binged it, but if you're into that, I want to talk about that on Discord. Thank you, yeah. John Lehman. I didn't realize in the past that you're British. A nice British last name. I'll remember that. So, yep, yeah, Ringo, way to go. I need to back rub that. <laughs> you two are scaring me, Elbow and Tulloweth. You're, you're you're racing toward the line that even I would stop for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, MIDI for life. MIDI keyboards can't go out of tune. <laughs> That's so true. And and their keys can't break either. So well, they could, I guess. But <laughs> elbow, you I, I, you you beat me to it, but I didn't see it yet. So I give myself credit for for us both getting there about the same time. David Thomas, the tank engine is uneasy about his large following with autistic kids. I'm not sure how to react to that. I'm not sure either. I'm just gonna I'm gonna walk on by. Right. But John's got it. This is the way, man. <laughs> so it my puns are like Benatar songs. They're not all hits, but the lesser ones make the really good ones stand out. Okay. Hell is for <laughs> Tullowitz puns then. <laughs> yeah. I just got into Star Trek Enterprise. Binge the heck out of that when that came out and cannot wait for the new ones to come out. Let me give you my take on Star Trek Enterprise. This is so cool. Watch this in every single episode that happens. At some point, it's usually Jean-Luc, but not always. Oh, sorry, Enterprise, you're going back to Bacula. I'm talking about uh, Picard. Uh, but watch Picard sometime. It's got this one theme that constantly runs through it. Somewhere in the first half of the episode, uh, he will apologize to someone or everyone and then in the back half, he will thank someone or everyone. And watch that. Nobody, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've never seen anybody write that up, but I guarantee it's there. Uh, you just ruined the whole series. I did. I, spoiler alert. <laughs> Post spoiler alert. <laughs> Enterprise. That's cool. 
I liked Enterprise. It, it got schmaltzy. And the one thing that I thought sucked about Enterprise was they didn't bother to write their own opening theme. They had to use the old Rod Stewart song and uh, did it as a cover tune. And ugh. Hmm. Ugh. Am I the only one, says Elbow, who wishes there was a Mandalorian video game? There surely will be. I'm, I'm sure there will be. Yeah. Right now, they're just trying to create Baby Yoda. Grogu, we can say his name now. It's not a spoiler. It's a week old. He'll always be Baby Yoda to me. Say again? <laughs> He'll always be Baby Yoda to me. Yeah. Yeah, I think everyone. I mean, come on. He's on the space station. <laughs> How epic is that? Yep. And Picard pulls his tunic down when he stands. Absolutely. But he's been doing that ever since Next Gen. All right, we're caught up at 255. Let's talk about a project. This is not a long project. It has 17 steps. Uh, I've done a bunch of them already. I've done four of them already because they're time consuming and I don't want you to sit through them. Uh, but they're really easy to follow along. So let me go dig up Uncle Notes here. I'm going to start with notes and then I'm going to move into demo mode. Notes right there. Okay, so I think the question here is not that it's cool to do. It certainly is. But just running a Pi standalone with a micro SD card is not an uncool thing to do. But it's got a problem. And all of the solutions to it have problems. The question is, what's the lesser of the evils in those? So here we go. Almost all storage media. Let's enumerate some of them. Micro SD cards and SD cards. Uh, flash drives. External hard drives of any kind. SATA drives, uh, IDE drives, PADA drives, SSDs and hybrids. Those are the big basics. They all have a limited life cycle of how many times you can write to a memory cell. Hard drives, a little bit different. They do have a write cycle limitation. It's huge. So we love that. But if you take your hard drive that you used in 2004, you extracted your data that you need from it for the next computer, and you threw it on the shelf. If you bring it back now, 15 years later, the magnetic signatures, the magnetic uh, patterns that were written on that hard drive back then have begun to lose fidelity. And the drive was no longer reliably readable. So that one's not such a big deal about how many times you overwrite a cell. You can do it a lot. Uh, and you can start over and, and do it with an old hard drive, clean it, format it, and start it over again with fresh. But the bigger problem, of course, with hard drives, as we all know, is they're mechanical devices. They have a, several built-in failure modes because of the things in there that move. The motors that spin them, the step motors and uh, linear actuators, the voice coil motors that move the heads, those have limited life cycles to them. The other uh, SSDs, they have memory cells that have limited number of write cycles per cell. Same for flash drives. And the worst one of the genre that we're talking about here is hybrid HDs, ATD, HDDs. My ADD is coming through. So a hybrid hard disk drive has a little SSD on it that lives between the hard drive platter and your computer. And it kind of works like the prefetch in your CPU. It says, I have a pretty good idea based on what you've read so far, what you're going to read next. So while you're doing your thing, Mr. Computer, I'll go and read that off the hard drive and write that into my SSD cells. And when you call for it, if I'm right, bam, I can shoot them to you really fast. And terrific, if that's working, now I'll go do it again. So that thing is actually constantly rewriting and refilling. So they have relatively low life compared to a standard SSD where you're not constantly overwriting everything all the time. Well, of all of those items, that was four. The fifth one, the SD card, the micro SD card has the worst tolerance to overwriting, writing, rewriting, things like that. So your typical uh, consumer grade SSD 
is good for 100,000 cycles typically per uh, cell, for individual cells. That sounds like a small number. It's not. For most consumers, that will give you years more life than just running a hard drive for that same number of hours of operational time. And they make pro versions, commercial versions of those that have five to 10 times the rewrite capability of the consumer version. So you can get somewhere between a half a million write cycles per cell and a million. So wonderful. But not so for micro SDs. I don't have numbers off the top of my head. I was trying to look for hard numbers, but way, way less. And so while you may not ever envision this, if you look at a micro SD card, I didn't get one out in my hot little hand, there's three of them. Okay, let me move this document so I can see what you can see. All right, so there's three micro SD cards on this thing. It's a 64 and a couple of 16s if I remember right. I'm marvel at that, right? 64 gigs of storage in this little red one. So think about the, the size of the memory chip that's in there. And maybe that's one of the reasons, just because of its sheer size, that it doesn't have the, the thickness or the tolerance, therefore, of the many write cycles. So in addition to the memory chips that are in there, there is another chip. It's called a controller chip. And built into that controller chip is a function called a where level manager. And his job is to keep track of how many times cells get written to and when a rewrite is called for, he says, nope, hold on, don't rewrite into that cell. I'll mark it as available uh, and unused and write to a cell that hasn't been written to before. So it kind of evens out the number of writes that right. happen on this thing over time. Hey, that sounds pretty good. Except there's one small problem. Uh oh. Let's say you didn't wear level control and you continuously overwrote this cell and after 4,000 writes, that cell failed. Well, you know, it failed and, and you got to deal with it. You hopefully add a backup, but you can probably still use the card. In fact, if you reformat it, that cell will be marked out and you'll be able to use the rest of the card. Well, since wear leveling evens all that out, by the time one is ready to fail, they're all about ready to fail. So when the failure comes, it's gonna be catastrophic. You're gonna chuck the card. And again, with all of these media types, I don't care what you're using, backup is critical. So there is a good reason for us to say, I don't think I wanna boot from a micro SD card in here anymore uh, because I don't want the constant rewriting that's happening. The operating system makes constant rewrites. And of course, so do the various applications that we install on here. So I don't want that thing to fail because of rewrites. So pick your favorite device based on your budget and the speed and the capacity that you want and get yourself a hard drive or a thumb drive or whatever. And now you wanna boot off of it. All right, now I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna head straight into my next point. Okay. Use storage media higher. Talked about RPI 3s can do it natively. So RPI 4 didn't support it natively. I believe that the current board revision right now is 1.1.4. The first board came out, of course, was a 1.0, uh, then a 1.1, and then they did several iterations of 1.1.1, 1.1.2, and so forth. And I don't know which specific board rev naturally supports booting, but again, any of them can be fixed and updated. So the board that I'm gonna to use today is a 1.1.1. And the tutorial that I'm gonna refer you to, uh, you'll see the difference and I'll show you how to, to look at these things, is a 1.1.4. But even then in, in the tutorial they used, they showed us how to uh, make sure that an, an appropriate update happens so that it can do this thing. So the process, let me show you this, the tutorial in question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you to a tutorial on a site that we talked about on at Mike's the other day called tomshardware.com, T-O-M-S. Let me get the sharer utility going here. 
So Tom's got a lot of things going on and it does hardware reviews and comparisons and things like that. But there's also lots of how to's on there. And this one was, was a pretty good one. So it's www.tomshardware.com how dash to whack boot dash raspberry dash pi dash the number four dash USB. Don't charge over there right this second and start doing it. It's got some things that have changed already. So bear with me with mine. I'll identify what and where the changes are. And then you can use that. Or you can go ahead and do it. Uh, and when they say go to uh, menu number three, it's called this. No, menu number three is called that. And the, the label that they talk about doesn't even exist anymore. But it's in there somewhere. You can find it. It's what I had to do. So let me bring up the utility or the process. I'm going to demo this whole thing while I show it to you on a share screen. All right. Yeah. Feeling dangerous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm doing this on a Raspberry Pi 4 server that has a couple of utilities on it that we've already done. You guys have played with it with me. We've got uh, a Kodi server on here. There's a Plex server on there, a couple of other goodies. All right, it's running. Now let me share it. Bingo, bango. And hey, we got a Raspberry Pi. I have on Tuesday, that's my day, uh, I update and upgrade all my Raspberry Pis, but that's not enough to make this one work. So we're going to start out with a terminal session. That should be big enough to see. I did a lot of prep on that. Looks good. Yeah. I, I, comes the big fear. No matter, there's one or two things that I couldn't, wouldn't do because I didn't want, want them to already be done and people not to see them. So there's always the cringe factor. It's not that I didn't rehearse it. I did it on other computers, but I, I have fears. So we'll see what happens. So step number one is one that you do all the time. And I'm not going to run, I'm not going to hit the enter key on here. You should always do before you install any kind of software, make any kind of software or operating system changes, a sudo apt update apt. And then you can do this after it's done on a separate line or combine these together on the same line, sudo apt minus y to Spell automatically sudo. say yes, upgrade. Spell sudo, right? And sud. <laughs> Okay, you hit the enter key on here. And as long as your Pi is reasonably current and up to date, this will be all done in five minutes. But they're gonna have you do something after that that's a little different. Now they say to do a sudo apt update. If you've just done that with an upgrade, you don't have to repeat that. Then two new commands, sudo apt full dash upgrade. This one is fairly quick, happens in about two minutes. And it makes an, up, an update to the operating system. And we don't have to care too much about it, don't sweat it. The other one then is this guy, a sudo apt rpi dash update. That one is gonna take you a while, plan on a good 10 minutes Maybe more if you've got, uh, I'm doing, yeah, full upgrade. A full upgrade is five to 10 minutes. I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, this one, five to 10 minutes. And there's a couple things that you should be aware of on here. One, it's going to look at your boot partition. Your boot partition is a FAT32 partition. And it's going to evaluate its size. If it's under 256 megabytes, it's going to generate a warning that says, hey, what we're about to do may take up more space than you have there. Do you want to continue, yes or no? Well, if you haven't added anything to the boot partition other than the default installation files, it's 255 megabytes, and that's big enough. I did this this morning just to do a double check on everything. 117 megs gets downloaded and put into that folder. So as long as you've got 117 megs or 18 megs of free space, then you don't have to say no to their warning. Yes, I want to continue. And then it's gonna go through a long download and installation process. There's going to be some parts that 
stay static for a long time. I think so one somewhere around 30 something percent, 34 percent, if I remember right, maybe one in the 20s. Uh, it just sits there a long time. Don't panic. It's doing its thing. It'll get there. When it gets to 76 percent as of today's installation, it will stop with a yes or no question that wants to know if you want to continue. And it's all about updating an installation file. You don't want to update or change the installation file. If you do, what it will do is replace the file with the original, I've never been installed or run Raspberry Pi OS. And you'll just stop everything and blow it all away and have to start from scratch with a clean install. So when you get that question, no, I don't want to replace the file that they ask about. Yes, I want to continue. Let me make sure I'm reading my notes, notes correctly here. Get a couple of warnings. Say yes to the first two about the size. And oh, by the way, if you don't have enough size in that space, you don't have 117 megs free. I did this just to test it. Uh, it bricks your system. You, all you got to do is pull the card and do a fresh Raspberry Pi OS installation. But what a pain, huh? Okay, I'm doing fine here. <clears throat> when you answer yes to the two questions, you're gonna see a list of things that get updated. Uh, again, somewhere in that five to 10 minute zone, it takes a lot of stuff. I'm not gonna read this to you. But the very last message after it's all done, it has this really cool completion message that says, if no errors appeared, your firmware Let's make sure I didn't miss something. I don't think I did. Pseudo apt update, pseudo apt full dash upgrade. Okay, we're fine. And then pseudo rpi dash update. Good, didn't miss anything. Because <clears throat> I've been burned by that here before. <laughs> <laughs> the first message that you'll see when you hit the big yes on that is updating firmware. And that one takes a long time. And then you'll see updating kernel modules. That takes a while. And then you'll see four lines that say depth mode followed by some number. Those are dependency modules that are getting updated. And then a bunch of other updates and updating and running and storing and deleting downloaded files and syncing changes to disk. And okay, so now it's done. And it says, if no errors appeared, your firmware was successfully updated to, and you'll get this great big long hexadecimal number. And they'll tell you a reboot is necessary to activate. So because those are all so time consuming, I've already done them here on this computer because we'd be here for another 20, 25 minutes. So we reboot, we find ourselves back at the desktop. Let's go ahead and do that. So there's what it looks like after the first reboot. Now we've got to install the bootloader. This is the permanent fix that makes the Raspberry Pi able to boot from an external device. All that stuff was kind of preparatory, but this is the real thing. Uh, it doesn't take long. It takes about two seconds, and I'll go ahead and do it. Won't hurt anything here. So we sudo rpi dash double e prom dash update space minus d space minus a sudo rpi dash eeprom dash update space minus d space minus a and you hit the enter key on this thing and it's done so now we've made a permanent change to one of the chips inside the the raspi and that means hey i know how to boot from remote now and then after you do this the first time you have to reboot the computer again because that chip that firmware gets read only during boot up. So I've already done this. That information is not different. The bootloader was already up to date. So I don't need to reboot here. Hey, we're all done. Five steps done out of 17 or 16. Now while you're in or when you reboot again, you open up another terminal here and you run the text-based configuration utility, sudo raspi-config. And this is where Tom's blows it for the next two lines. 
the Tom's tutorial says the next thing you do is select the boot options item, which is number three in the list. Well, you can see number three in the list isn't interface options. And if you go into interface options, there's nothing in there that says boot options. So what you have to do is go to item number six, advanced options. I press enter here. And then there's step number eight says, select the boot ROM version and press enter. You can see there's no boot ROM version in here, but two out of three words are correct, boot loader version. So that's what we go to. And I have not done this on this machine. So here's where the big fear comes. We'll see how long this takes on this machine, but it says that the Tom's version tells us to select boot prom version and, and press enter. And then step nine, select latest item, item E1, then okay. So I arrow to E1 and you okay it by hitting the tab key that leaves this highlighted. And now you enter, there's nothing that works with a mouse here. Everything has to be done with the keyboard. So we hit the magic okay. And it says, this is gonna trigger, select, uh, select no. Tom's next says, select no to use the latest boot ROM. This will trigger the Raspberry Pi to complete a series of behind the scenes configuration steps. Latest boot ROM collected will be loaded next group. Reset boot ROM defaults. I think that Tom's exercise should say yes, but I'm gonna hit no here. Now you gotta hit yes, they screwed that up. Bootloader version, use the latest. Reset boot ROM to defaults. Latest version, boot ROM selected, will be loaded next reboot. Now, if you set this to the defaults, it goes back to the old one. No is correct. So it's selected. That's all we need to do. That's cool. They are right. So item next, one more piece here, and then the pie is done. We're going to, it took us back to the main menu. We're going to go back in again, not to what they say. They say go into the boot order menu again, that item three. Nope, we're going to advanced options. And then we're going to follow their instructions, select boot order. And look at this. This is just beyond cool. They actually solved this problem first, and then they solved this. So you can have a server out there with Raspberry Pi operating system boot files. And if we select this network boot, the Pi will call out for that server, download the file as if they came from a hard drive and you don't need any kind of storage device on your system. You can do that with PCs and Macs as well. It's called Pixie booting. And this has actually been supported for about a year on the Pi 4 and was, has been supported for a long time on the earlier versions. But we're gonna say, now we want to boot from USB and note the message here. It says boot from USB device if SD card boot fails. So there's two reasons that an SD card boot will fail. One is if there is something wrong with the card. You've got a card installed. It doesn't have a functioning operating system in it. You either never installed one or it glitched or whatever. Or the way we want to do it long term is there is no SD card in there. So I want to boot USB boot. Now that also means then if you leave a bootable SD card in this Raspberry Pi when you're done, it'll boot from that. And now we go buzz, 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 grind, grind, grind. USB is now the default boot device. That is just cool. Note, select USB boot, click OK. Note there's no bootable, da, da, da. select finish. So we tab or arrow, right arrow over to finish. That'll close this. Do you want to reboot now? Yes, we got to reboot now. So I'll break that while it reboots. All right, now the computer has the capability to boot from an SD or from a USB device. So the next thing you got to do is get an SD device, a, a USB device, and get an operating system on there and files. And there are two ways to do that. One method would be to take a blank, shiny, handy dandy USB device, a flash drive, an external hard drive, whatever the case may be. Dave. Hi there. Does it have to be purple? 
<laughs> no, I got a black one here. Oh, okay, just checking. <laughs> Uh, so you can take a blank one, install that, plug it into your regular old computer, and use the Raspberry Pi image utility and write the image, the boot image, to this thing instead of writing it to a micro SD card. Simple solution. That's great if, you're, if you want to do a brand spanking new install. But what I want to do is I want to take the everything that's on my micro SD card, my Plex server, my Kodi server, all my other goodies that are on that thing and transfer that to the new card that I want to work with, the new device that I want to work with. All right, I've rebooted, going back to there. We've only got about seven or eight minutes left. So we're gonna finish way early compared to my usual long running ones. Huzzah! I love huzzah, that's gotta be you goober. There's an entomological word that I wanna look up. All right. Blow you back up, share this entomological. Yeah, no, it's buggy. It's entomological. Okay, so there's my fresh, shiny new reboot. Now this is not in the Tom's hardware, but I think this is a really important step. So let me show you this. What I'm gonna do right now is I am not going to plug in the new USB device. I'm just gonna to go to the desktop here. I'm gonna click on the Raspberry menu. I'm going to go down to accessories and I'm going to run the SD card copier. Now you can see that one of these boxes where I want to copy a card to is grayed out. That's good. So where do you want to copy from? Well, I want to copy from the micro SD card that's currently installed. So I'm going now later when I plug this in, two items are going to come up in the menu and I can pick either as the source and either as the destination. So if I accidentally pick this blank flash drive as the source, the only other option for the copy to device, the destination will be my micro SD card and I'll overwrite it with blank. So I don't do this, I do this first, I do this copy from device and I just select something in there so I can see what the micro SD card looks like to the system. So in my computer, it looks like EB1QT. It's in WAC Dev, WAC MMC, Block Zero. Write that down if this isn't kind of a native language to you that you're gonna be able to remember. Then we close it. And now we're ready to go back to the Tom's tutorial. I'm also adding a step here to the tutorial. So after step 13, before you go to step 14, you're going to want to plug in your card or plug in your device. And there are three steps that you want to check before you do this. Step number one, make sure that the device is, has more, it's, it's bigger, doesn't have, it's not a free space issue because we're gonna write, overwrite everything that's on here. So if you had some important data on whatever you're gonna plug into it, get it off first, you're gonna lose it. Make sure it's at least as large as the micro SD card that you're going to copy from. Now, if you're working with a hard drive, shouldn't be a big deal. If you're working from a flash drive, might very well be a big deal. If it's too small, it'll just not work. If you're gonna use a hard drive or an SSD in an enclosure, make sure that your system has enough power to run it. You might have to use uh, a hub with power, a powered hub. And we're going to be playing only with the USB 3 connectors. That bootloader won't work with the Raspberry Pi USB 2 loaders. Okay, so these are just kind of make sure's. Once you've made sure this is the right device that I want to use, it's got enough space, I got enough power to drive it, you plug it in. Now I'm not going to go through this, I'm just going to do the steps on here because I don't know what's on this card. And, and five other reasons. Let's just go with that. I'm just gonna run you through the process because it's really, really stunningly simple after this point. So you plug the new handy dandy card into it and then you do exactly what we did before to learn that information. We're gonna hit the Raspberry menu, accessories and go to the SD card copier. It used to be called the SD card duplicator which is a little smarter thing to do. So you pick the Micro SSD is your source, 
Then you use your pull down here and you select your plugged in device that you've got on the USB three card. Your option here with new partition UUIDs. If you're going to, for some insane reason, keep those same two devices, the old micro SD card and the new device, you definitely don't want new partition UUID, you do want new partition UUIDs because that card will have a UUID of let's say one, two, three, four, and this will have an ID of one, two, three, four, and Linux tracks things by their UUID and that will cause conflicts and if they work at all, count your blessings. Uh, so if you don't want, if you're gonna pull that micro SD card and you're never gonna plug it in here again, then you don't have to do that, but it'll never hurt you to do new partition UUIDs. And then you hit the start button and depending on how much data that you've got, it's gonna go and, and do the handy dandy copy. And when you're all done, you close this utility, you power it off, never pull a micro SD card or put in a micro SD card with power on it. You could destroy either the card or the motherboard. There's always the possibility here. So we select copied from, we select copy to, we start the copy. Tom says this process should take around 10 minutes. Again, how much space, how big? And then there's something that they miss in, in here because we're, we're almost done with their tutorial. One more sentence, but just as an FYI, we just went through Cyber Monday last week. Uh, and of course I went out and shopped for pie stuff and so forth. And one of the things I saw that was getting marketed very heavily was big micro SDs. Now you should be nervous, I think in my own humble opinion about wacky name and unknown named micro SSD cards. But for the money, I would be willing to experiment with a couple of these. I saw a 400 gig micro SD card for 40 bucks and smaller ones. I saw good brand name ones that were 40 bucks for 256 gigs. And that's kind of a worthwhile expenditure. But again, they still have the same wear problem. Hey, another way to solve the wear problem, bigger cards. So that uh, pie hole that I fixed with its tiny little card, I didn't change anything on it. I haven't shrunk down the size of the logs that are gonna get created, but by putting in a larger 64 gig card, the wear level has a lot more real estate to work with. All right, we are done. We now power down the Pi, you pull the micro SD card and you power it up and it's going to boot from your USB device. That's it, that's done. And Tom's has nothing more to say about it. I have one more thing that's really, really important. Let's say that I took one of these black micro SD cards. Let me close out of here. Actually, we don't need this. Unshare, do that. Okay, so I take one of these black micro SSD cards and I do an installation on it. It's 16 gigs. Cool. And I just do the exercise that you and I did. Well, what's going to happen? It's going to duplicate 16 gigs of information from here to this 64 gig flash drive. And it's gonna make it a 16 gig partition. It's gonna make it exactly what this one would be. So while you have improved your lot in life because you've got a faster and more write and overwrite tolerant device, it's still a 16 gig card. So item next, I don't know how long this is gonna take because I didn't do it on this machine. So let's watch it is to do the following. Open up a terminal. I think this is quick, that's why I'm willing to do this. sudo apt install gparted. This is their hard drive manager, their storage device manager. You really wanna do this? Yeah, I really do. It's gonna get a whole three megs of files. So that's pretty quick. So gparted is kind of like, uh, what's the name of the Microsoft utility, Scott? I'm brain farting. Disk management, disk management. Would you agree that it's disk management? I would. That okay. sounds great, Dave. Thanks. Glad I could help. 
Okay, so Disparted is the Linux version of Microsoft's Disk Management Utility. It's done. I can launch it from the command line here. I'm not gonna. Let's go see where it appeared in here. Is that an accessory? System tool, probably. Gparted, there it is. Got to give my password. It's Raspberry. I don't care if you know that because that's what it is on all my Raspberry Pis. <clears throat> and now he's studying the file systems that are on here. Of course, what's in there is really just the only, the single micro SSD card. But you can see all these different kinds of partitions in here and we can extend a partition. I'm not gonna do a class on Gparted today, but this card is about halfway full. It looks like a 64 gig card. It's got 27 gigs of data on it. And I can go and change the size of this. If we saw this uh, as an unfull device, we would see a line somewhere that says, here's unallocated space. And I can use Gparted and extend whichever of these sections I want into that space. And I would extend the ext4 root partition into that space. So that's the last thing you need to do. And you are booting from USB and you're using USB and you're writing and reading to a much more tolerant set of media. So what do you think? It's pretty cool. Now I tell you what, if I were to do this on that machine and use a flash drive, Mm. This, I think, is the one place where I would find it acceptable to use those little flash drives that aren't this big, but that are this big. Because if this thing sticks out of the back of a pie, here's one, like that. And what a royal pain in the, the end to bump into that thing or smash into it. Back here, I've got one. This is my own cloud. Uh, sorry, this is next cloud, better than own cloud. So I got to keep this thing tucked away. So if it falls, it's not going to bend. And so if it's sticking over the edge, somebody's not going to ram into it. So those little tiny ones uh, are great for that. I hate traveling with those little tiny ones. I have a couple in my briefcase when I do uh, roadshow classes and things like that. And they wind up in the nooks and crannies and corners of my briefcase and hopelessly unfindable. I, tear through it in the hotel that the night before to make sure I've got it in my pocket. And then they beep when you go through FBI metal detectors. <laughs> yeah, so that was good. Uh, this was a, a much cleaner, uh, more efficient presentation, a little shorter project that I think is really cool because you don't have to buy any hardware other than stuff that you normally buy on a fairly regular basis. What do you mean, Dave? It's the network world I don't use flash drives anymore or external hard drives. Yeah, you do. They have their places and this is a great place for them. So you can do that on your next Pi, Scott? I don't know what I'm gonna do for my next Pi. Definitely, of course, I'm gonna uh, get a Pi 3B just to make a Pi hole because, you know. Oh, don't buy one. You know I have- <laughs> 500 of them? 70 or 80 Pi 3Bs. Next time I come over, I will bring you one. Cool. A pie hole. Yeah, having, having a pie hole because Mike has set up his his first pie hole and he's like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest thing ever. And so I'm like, <laughs> okay, let's, let's, uh, let's see what the greatest thing ever really is. So, yeah. And by cleaning up my desktop here for a second so I got room to look at you. There we go. Right. Oh, that's true. And of course, Telewit just reminded me that I need to set up my next Pi to control all my insane, insane Christmas lights. Yeah. <laughs> I think you and I should this summer create a, a, a box. I have the box in mind. It's a really relatively easy project. You remember the, the project that you and your son did on paper, uh, when you had to design a, a functioning three-way switch for two sockets. Sure. This is no more complicated than that. And the logic is way, way easier. Uh, you buy a plastic toolbox, you buy uh, however many duplex outlets you want to plug things into, mm -hmm. a Raspberry Pi and a relay board. And it's all about wiring. You just gotta be able to, to drag this wire 
from this relay on the connector to that wire on the duplex plug. And then the software is already out there all over the place to do this. And of course you could do it remotely so you can have it out there. That would be so cool for both your and my displays next year. Sounds cool. Summer project or if we ever get back in the office. Yeah, as long as we can, uh, you know, make the link to control the lights in the Discord channel. Yeah. Right. Well, your uh, ring, you, you've, you've solved your ring problem, right? I have solved my ring problem, yes. Okay, well, if we can get to the front porch, then we're good to go. <laughs> yeah, no, the, I, that was my Cyber Monday purchase or Black Friday purchase was a new, uh, a new ring camera doorbell. So this is one of those things where the missus is like, no, no, we can't. We don't need to spend money on things like that. I'm like, and then once I got it installed and she's like, oh, wow. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, Fun. I see a lot of questions here. I must have been boring. Everybody was yammering. Uh, we left off at 2.55. It's 3.35 now. So we got about 40 minutes worth of questions to catch up. We have Galaxy Quest trending. I'm That is my probably number in the top five Guilty pleasure movies, most Mel Brooks movies, and Galaxy Quest. Man, I love that. And it's got Jamie Lee Curtis and what's not to love there. <laughs> <laughs> You're dating yourself. Yeah, well, at least I never say no then. <laughs> I didn't say that out loud, did I? <laughs> no, no. I like uh, Telewit at 302. Might need to do a parody of uh, Shatner's Get a Life. SNL <laughs> with get a job, which I think is a yeah. great idea. I think That's it's a, a very great good idea. idea. You know what? When you do the shirt, do yeah, your right. face on it. Yeah, I like get it. The job with Shatner's face. Cody, wow, I haven't played with Cody in forever. It's still good. It gets better every time they re-release it. Scott, did you see Corn last year? I did not. It was right after you, you went to Coldplay, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> wow. You went there. <laughs> what I do? My one and only concert was Hall & Oates in Honolulu a few years ago. They were supposed to tour this year. I've never seen them live, and I wanted to see, and then this happened, but I take it on faith that they will tour again. So, yeah. Good. Not my, not my, genre, but, not my genre, but definitely amazing musicians. So. Yeah. Ray Luzier is a beast on the kit. Sweet. Yeah, we were uh, we were discussing a heavy metal, basically thrash yeah. metal. Stuff, so there's a heavy metal club here in town, Black Horse. Yeah. They haven't shut down. There's always a metal show. Of course, it's mostly you know C-listers right now and D-listers. Uh, metal's not my genre, but uh, the kid likes it. And so I've, he's never gone, but I keep offering to get him show tickets. So one of these days when they come back. Moving past 315. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, okay, you're wrong. Let's just stop there. <laughs> 316, Jason Helms. Correct me if I'm wrong. So anytime I want to update in Linux, I have to do it with the command line. No. Um, it depends on the Linux version that you're using. Ubuntu, in fact, won't let you do it from the command line. It locks you out and it uses the uh, software updater. Uh, you can do it with the uh, menu utilities. You can do it with uh, third party utilities. You can do it with Synoptics. But this is one of those age old arguments which is better, the GUI or the command line? And this is one where I fall on the command line site. It's quicker, it's easier. Pseudo apt update double ampersand, pseudo, amp, uh, pseudo apt upgrade minus Y. You can put the minus Y before or after the upgrade. Yeah, there's a menu option in some distros, especially Linux. I was updating a, a Linux server two nights ago and I went to do it manually and it choked and grabbed. And I remembered that happened to me before. Uh, and the lockup is so painful at a certain point that you have to stop it and run through about 25 commands to get everything unlocked so you can do it the Ubuntu way. So I stopped this one in time and I was able to go to the graphical utility. Hey, we're in agreement, Scott. 318, easy to do it from the terminal. Yep. 
320. Andrew. Nah, too easy with her. Everybody's. Yeah, everybody's jumped on there. Alice would say, I do it from the terminal with a mental interface. <laughs> Proceed it with a really difficult question. Excuse me, first. So Mike's got the nose itch thing. I have the hiccup thing. And it's kind of dawned on me in the last dozen shows at some point or another, I hiccup in the middle of it. Yep, this is true. It's your thing. You know, that and the shimmying. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I have to, I have to remember to sit still. I, I, I bounce all the time. Yeah. Just really. So when I'm performing or when I'm, well, this, this is performing, I mean, you know, doing this sort of thing, I have to like consciously think about not wiggling my legs and yeah. things. So. Right. And when you teach, you're a big hand user. And I, I am too. I I'm need a, a whiteboard. If I don't have a whiteboard, then I'm whiteboarding with my hands. And I think the, the, the only thing that would make teaching total hell for me is to make me stand in one place. Oh man. Yeah. It can't happen. <laughs> I'm like, I'm running around the classroom, throwing things at students, uh, jumping on desks just cause you know, why not? <laughs> I'm Did one you, of those teachers. Oops, I'm sorry. Did you answer uh, Deepak's question about the, the first show when we first did? Uh, I did. And I posted, I posted the link. Okay, good. Then I will not research that. Yeah, no, I posted the link. And then we were also, of course, talking about the Dr. Evan Upton amazing show. Yeah. So if you guys haven't watched that on, uh, if you weren't there for it live, definitely check out Dr. Pie. He is so cool. And his daughter is just the cutest little thing you'll ever run across. She broke the internet, man. Mm hmm Yeah. All right, passing 323, there's always... Man dash K and dash help and any command, command space minus minus help. Yep. We're mostly command liners here, but we certainly have places for menus. That uh, menu for the the disk, the yeah, disk copier, image copier, uh, that's actually uh, kind of think of it as a batch file or a script file that runs uh, the DD command line. That's one of those cases where I'll definitely do that as opposed to doing DD. Brandon Baldwin. We have another Brandon here? Have yes, we do. Okay, nice. Welcome, Brandon Baldwin. Yeah, do that on rewatch, Jason. When uh, You've got a, a computer running uh, RetroPie, if I remember right. GUI is for when you want to use it. Terminal is for when you want to break it. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Best line of the day, tell it. <laughs> Kevin, by the way, SD card copier only works for copying Raspberry Pi or any OS built over it. Okay, yeah, so it's a utility that's built into the Raspberry Pi OS. If you if that's not your core operating system that you're running, you're going to have to use DD or what you can do is uh, on Windows use uh, Right 32, let me come up with the name of this. Oh, there it is, I saw it. Win32 Disk Imager. So you, if you uh, installed Ubuntu or something like that on a micro SD card and that's what you're running in your Pi and you wanna transfer that to a flash drive, and I've actually done this, um, pop them both in your Windows machine and run Right32 SD and it'll do it. Bootable and everything. I tried to copy Kali to Ubuntu using it and doesn't work properly. Yeah, because yeah, because yeah, uh, I got. Do I want to show you this? Let's only take a second here. Oh God, that's long. No, I'm not going to do that. So at 3:24, Jason Helms asked. Um, so if you download an operating system and load it on the Pi. If you just downloaded it, do you have to update it? Yes, because already files and patches have come out four minutes after it was posted for download. And now if you're doing a, a like a fresh version of Raspberry Pi OS or a noobs install, as soon as the install is complete and updated, 
it will do the update and upgrade. And that's insanely time consuming. I did one when I rebuilt that uh, Pi Zero the other day. The install and the adding of the, the pie hole and everything, that took, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, something like that. And then it said, okay, I'm doing my update and upgrade right now. Uh, and that was about an hour and a half, partly wow. because it's Wi-Fi only. It's a, a Pi Zero, it doesn't have a LAN interface. Uh, and partly because the performance of the Pi Zero, it's only a one gigahertz processor. So it can't run the SD cards that fast. You know, you can- uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just repeat what you said. I don't think I can. It's only a one gigahertz oh, yeah. processor. Isn't that, welcome to the 21st century, <laughs> huh? Right? Like, wow. And we're like, oh, yeah. And yeah. it's this big. And it's like, you know, <laughs> piece of poop, man. Come on. You know how you can overclock various devices like RAM and video cards and CPU? You yeah. can overclock the SD controller in a Raspi. Pi. <laughs> I know. I haven't played with it in, in probably four years or so. What are we doing? Sounds like an epic project. 45. Okay, good. I'm passing 25. We're more than halfway caught up. I, I, I got a cool thing I want to tell everybody about uh, in the last five or 10 minutes. We're almost there. Oh, always give you a place. Oh, good. Okay, sweet. Thanks, Scott. I'll check it out. Dave went back and painstakingly put indices. That's right. I did. So they're all indexed. I'm two behind. Today's and I didn't do uh, mics from two days ago yet. I will do them tonight or over the weekend, and they'll be up on Monday. But that indexing is really cool. If you're not aware, it, don't be impressed by what I did. Um, pity me, because I watch Mike do all these shows, and then I have to watch him do them all over again and timestamp them and give each sex in a title. And, uh, you know, I had to, to kick my dog every day after doing that for four or five times. But here's the magical result. Ian Camacho, some of you have seen him on uh, mic shows and he inputs here sometimes, uh, took all that information and there is a, a mechanism in the YouTube forum that allows that information to be associated with each respective video. So when you do a searches in the YouTube forum, search for Mike Myers and virtual machine, and you will not only find his YouTube archive, but you'll find the time mark. It'll take you right to the time mark where he started that presentation. So, I mean, it's got great value for everybody. Take advantage of that. And you can you can refine your search instead of doing it straight at, at YouTube, go to the Total Seminars channel. And there's a little search thing below the main window. Yep. Uh, search specifically in the channel. So easy way to do it. Dave, shipping for pie stuff on Cyber Monday. <laughs> what else is there to do on Cyber Monday? We're all trapped in the house. Right, exactly. <laughs> Make leftovers. Which we did that too. Oh man, I just went through the last of my leftovers last night. I made a green turkey chili, a green chili turkey stew. And that was just... Ew, okay, <laughs> you're missing that one word. And I'm like, yeah, well, you don't... Chili no. turkey. I'm not sure I want to eat that. Green chili turkey. It was good. Got a pair of 128 gig SD cards for 30 bucks. Outstanding, Brandon. At Costco, no less. Got a mouse pad. Well, there goes 64 cents elbow. <laughs> 64 cents. What kind of mouse pads are you buying, Dave? Torn up old sheets from Goodwill. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm paying 15, 20 bucks for a mouse pad. Yeah. Gotta get the game. I usually pay around six or seven. You gotta get the gaming pads. Yeah. Special surface that makes your mouse go perfectly. Man. I'm not gonna put my mouse pad up. It is so filthy. It should, I never thought about washing it, but now that you're mentioning it, I'm looking <laughs> at it and it looks like it was dragged to the bottom of the Red Sea. Kevin Lopez, 328. I've heard of some no name SD cards claiming they have one terabyte, but really have 32. Right. In fact, uh, over on the uh, Discord channel, Patricia Grace, a few days ago, posted a great article on how to identify, with various pieces of software and other things, fake micro SD cards. It's a, a really good article. I read it. I experimented with it on my cards. If it's drifted off into the mist, just uh, do an at message to, what's her name there? Patricia? Yeah. Is it just Patricia? Here. Yeah. Patricia, 
Trisha Grace. She used the whole name on it. Find it. Yeah. Uh, and just ask her to repost it. I'm sure she will. So, uh, several several good comments and stuff, but it, while we're, we're running short of time, uh, Zach posted at 349, where would you recommend to buy a pie from and which one? Okay. Where any reputable retailer, I, I, because I have so many, I'm willing to take a risk and buy from eBay or something like that. But uh, in the US, the official distributor is, uh, it's called Newark. Newark.com will get you there. And uh, Micro Center, they're a, a distributor. And they sell at, at no more than retail. They don't jack up the price. And they often have sales, really good sales if you go in store, but five bucks, five bucks. Uh, and because of the price, uh, if you're new at it, I want you to get the, the current full function version that you can do everything with. That's the Pi 4B. There are four models of the Pi 4B, one gigabyte, two gigabyte, four gigabyte, and eight gigabyte. Very few people will need four or eight, especially as beginners. Later, maybe. One and two are the same price. So don't waste your money on the one gigabyte. The retail price for a 4B model with two gigs is 35 bucks. Now that's the card, you're not done. You gotta buy a power supply between 10 and 14 bucks. Again, from these same resellers, you're gonna want a case. If you lay that card down on anything that winds up with a little piece of metal on it, you're gonna short it out. You'll need a micro HDMI adapter. This is a mini, but they make cables that have micro on one side and full side on the other. Uh, they make these little adapters and they're like 99 cents off eBay. That's a good eBay buy. eBay buy. Uh, so Pi, case, power supply, and micro SD card. And uh, of course you're gonna, you have a keyboard, you've got a mouse, you can unplug them from your main computer and use them temporarily, or you can buy one. They're, they're not expensive. You can buy keyboards these days for 10, 12 bucks and a mouse for less. And you got to have to use your monitor with its HDMI box. So in the end, most people, if you want to buy a, a kit with those five critical items, they run between 60 and 70 bucks. Uh, you can probably save a, a couple of bucks, but it's a lot of trouble to go buy all that stuff individually. But for you and for most new users, 4B, two gigs. It's 10 bucks more for the four gig model. It's a lot more for the eight gig model. Uh, I know a couple people on here are using the eight gig. Kevin Lopez is using an eight gig. Mike bought an eight gig because he could, because everything he's doing with it, he certainly doesn't need eight gigs. Right, because all he's doing is a pie hole. Mm. Uh, he's got a media server too. Oh, okay. That's right, that's right. All right. Well, I'm kind of mixed through. A, a, a quickie story then, it's 52. Um, did I forget it? Oh, yeah. So some of you know, uh, and some of you on here, we have quasi-collectively signed up for a Python class on Udemy, run by a guy named Mihai, and I don't remember the official title, but it's got the word master class, one word in it. Good course, having a good time with it. And I've been studying it for a week or so. I finally got into it. There was a project that I got involved with with a gent four years ago making a particular piece of equipment work on a Raspberry Pi and on one of the Raspberry Pi competitors called Orange Pi. And he had a big Python script associated with it. And well, I've got some programming fundamentals from other languages, I didn't speak Python, but I remember looking at one of those pieces and uh, saying, wow, that's just clever. I don't know what this code means and this code means, but I know what you did here and I know your results here and all the gobbledygook that happened in between was magic. So I yanked out that piece of code as I'm taking this Python class to see if I could understand it. And yes, with very little of the, the lessons under my belt, I'm through four chapters now, uh, I understood 90% of it. And cool. I also understand why it no longer works today. And I got in touch with them last night, sent them an email about 2.30 this morning saying, hey, I got a project going, I wanna resurrect your old thing. Here's why it doesn't work. Here's what I've done to resolve it. 
and he's all stoked and he and I are collaborating again cool. to get this thing working. So take a Python class, man. That's just something cool to do. Absolutely. Well, I got a lot of help from my kid. He's had two semesters of Python for engineers. So he threw in some really good stuff. Excellent. Six minutes. I'll let you find questions. I, I, I gave them all your password. Excellent. <laughs> Seven dollar <laughs> dustpad. Yeah, me too. Elbow. That's what I figured you'd pay for them. Six euros. What is that like? Thirty five US. Because <laughs> you got to pay the European taxes and everything from Andre. <laughs> Gaming pad with LED. I know, right? I'm jealous. No kidding. Now I'm going to go shopping. Unofficial Discord. Right. So we're, I'm going to, to the Discord channel after we shut down here. I'll get there about five or six minutes after this. Scott Wall, because he's got things. Yeah. Meeting with my publisher right after. So yeah, I won't be there. We have time to put up the uh, happy stuff. Sure. Without rushing it. That's right. And I posted the unofficial Discord channel link again. Great. All right. So if you want to get in contact with us, we'll catch us on Discord. Write messages here, but that's going to go away in four minutes. So send me an email, D, uh, Dave R at totalsem.com. My personal email, if you prefer, drushtx at yahoo.com. Send a message to Scott at scottj.totalsem. We got discounts for you. 50% off all A+, Net+, Plus Total Tester, and Total Tester Sims bundles. And the Sec+, Plus Total Tester, Sims to be coming. Buy the stuff and at checkout, yeah, totalsem.com. And at checkout, use the code 113020. And you will get that 50% discount. It's good through this Sunday, December 6th. No, I don't know what time. I don't know what time zone. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. So Mike will be back on on Monday, uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Central uh, Standard Time. Um, I don't know if he's got something special going this week. Yeah, he talked to, oh, 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 Monday, 100th. Oh, that's the 100th show. Okay. All right. So Monday, December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day, for those who remember, <laughs> uh, is, is marks the 100th episode that Mike has done in this AMA series. So for a special, a special deal with that, uh, Mike's got special giveaways and, and prizes and things to celebrate. So come join us on Monday. Yeah, and we I'm might even have, about that one. We might then follow the show by following Mike live on camera with his rampaging Santas reenacting. Right, he's doing that before the show, so we should have video. <laughs> Pearl Santa Day. Yep, it'll be fun. Okay, we've got about three more minutes or so. Let's look at any critical questions, coasters. Brandon's got a four gig at the moment. When I go to buy an eight gig, it's going to be expensive. Yeah, retail on those, I think, is 75 or 80. Pi Zero W for Pi Hole works great. Yes, that's exactly what I'm running mine on, and I have three other servers running on it. Kubernetes clusters with four Pi's. Hey, um, Kubernetes just announced this week that they are no longer going to support Docker management in K8s. Those of you who care about that and understand what that means, uh, nobody really cares. There are still, your containers will still work. You'll still be able to manage them, but not K8 contain, excuse me, containers with Kubernetes. So Tullowood has a, a, a technical question yeah. that popped in uh, towards the end here. Give me time, Mark. Um, 3.56. Okay. Uh, is it possible to do a split screen using the same monitor for multiple devices at the same time? No. Yeah, that's that's I I, I was racking my brains like I, I yeah there they made some very early 2K monitors that had dual DVI ports, and you had to have a video card with dual DVI connectors, and you can connect to those, and it would coordinate half and half. Uh, but those things are long, long gone. So, no. So, so last question. Um, at 3.59, so this is literally the last question. 
uh, trying to get a career in cybersecurity. I know quite a bit of A-plus stuff already. Is it worth jumping into NetPlus and start studying and taking courses for that? All yours. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Kitty Shank, that the NetPlus, is that's your step in. You got to have it. Yep. All right, hey, folks. Well, it's been fun. It's been a great Pi Day Friday. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. We're all kind of getting ready for Christmas. If that's your thing, more power. And we're, uh, Scott and I, we're, we're crazy about lights and setups. And in a week or two, we'll show you wonderful pictures. Scott's already got uh, a massive setup going, and I'm sure he's going to add a few more things to it. I got a moderate setup, and I'll add more. We'll have some fun with that. Yep. Got a little work to do for you guys on the weekend. I haven't picked a project for next week, but whatever it is, it will be spectacular, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah, Scott, have a good meeting and a great show tonight. Thank you very much. Get Thank pictures you very much. and post them of, of you in current garb. <laughs> this is... <laughs> <laughs> 24 seconds past the hour. Michael is champing in the bit, waiting for us to do the big wave. Okay, so here we go. Ready? Yep. See you on Bye. Monday with Mike. Good night. Ooh, arms crossing in the night. <laughs> you know what? That's actually what it takes to make them synced. There, I just saw it on the...